for just a few minutes about a subject which is just as important to our history as it is to our current ministry of the church. The subject is the importance of the church in publishing the printed word. In 1901, A.J. Tomlinson published a monthly local paper called Samson's Foxes. He took the name of the paper from the foxes Samson had, had used to burn the fields of the Philistines. He believed that in the same way this paper would, would burn away the sin of the region of its distribution, spreading the good news of salvation to the lost. This was not his first publication, but it was the first of its kind from the one who would soon be given a vision of the last day's church. The paper only ran for two years. Then in January of 1904, he and M.S. Lemons began to publish a newspaper called The Way. Then, I'm sorry, the name was taken from John 14 and 6 where Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. This paper also only ran for two years. But it revealed a hunger in A.J. Tomlinson that, that A.J. Tomlinson had to produce a periodical which would act as an encouragement to the saved as well as a form of outreach to the lost. Up until this point, these have been personal endeavors with very small circulation. But in January of, two, of 1910, a committee was appointed, the General Assembly, to prepare a recommendation. Two days later, a publishing committee was appointed with A.J. Tomlinson as the editor. The name chosen for the first official periodical of the Church of God was the Evening Light and Church of God Evangel. That's a mouthful. The name was taken from Zechariah 14 and 7, where we read, But it shall be one day which shall be known to the Lord, not day nor night. But it shall come to pass that at evening time it shall be light. This was certainly a quick work because the inaugural, inaugural issue was published on the 1st of March, 1910. The initial, is, it, and the initial issue was distributed to 125 subscribers. The name of the paper, being quite long, was shortened at the very next General Assembly to the Church of God Evangel. After the separation from the former organization, the Call Council of August 8 through 10, 1923, many offices and projects had to be reestablished. One of those projects was the need for an official church newspaper. A brother told of a vision which he had concerning the words White Wing Messenger in an arched form with a beautiful dove bearing an olive branch. After a few comments, it was decided that it seemed good to the Holy Ghost and to them that this should be the name of the church paper. The first issue of the White Wing Messenger was dated September 15, 1923. Then, in 1992, before the reorganization of the church, in a meeting of the Concern for Bible Doctrine group, it was determined that there was a need for a newsletter that would allow those involved to be kept up to date with the unfolding situation at hand. The name of this newspaper came from the original official paper of the Church of God, the Evening Light and Church of God Evangel, our current church paper, the Evening Light. Stephen Smith took the lead, the load upon himself, and went and sent out subscriptions for free for several years with free will offerings covering the expenses. Stephen Smith was appointed as the assistant editor in November of 1993 at the General Assembly. For the first <coughs> issue, dated November 1992, there were about 125 on the subscription list. But by August of the next year, that list had grown to over 1,600. Eventually, production was transferred to General Headquarters, where it continues to this day. The ongoing work of the church is critical to the spiritual Sorry. The spiritual growth of those who seek his will. The printed word is only one way that the church carries out her mission. Personal ministry and preaching are important, but the printed word is often overlooked as a powerful tool in spreading the gospel. Although the world grows darker with each passing generation, the inner <coughs> light shines out as a beacon, leading souls to the truth. God has blessed me greatly by allowing me to work at General Headquarters. The experience has been a powerful motivating factor in my ministry. It's always a great source of encouragement to me when I hear of someone outside of the church who has come across an issue of the evening light. 
and contacts us for more information. God has granted the church gifted members and writers who seek out the will of God in their prayer closets. They fill the pages of the evening light with it, with words designed to strengthen our resolve to press forward. Testimonies instill a desire in each of us to step up a little closer to God in our daily walks. By this ministry, we receive edification from around the world. But it's not about how much we have. It's about knowing who supplies our needs and then returning worship to him through his chosen vessels. God's desire is that through the written word, we will attain a deeper knowledge of the truth. By the Spirit, we receive inspiration to continue the work of publishing the gospel through the printed word. Psalm 68 and 11, the Lord gave the word. Great was the company of those that published it. <coughs> through the printed word, we all work together to shine the light of God's word, revealing the beauty of his truth to the lost and dying souls around us, inspiring a new generation to continue the work of the Lord by any means possible. Now, I've been talking about our general publications up till now, but I wanted to point out the importance of the published word throughout the history of the church. This is a source of inspiration for the state paper, the state and regional papers across the country. I do recognize that we are in a transitional phase where much of our communication is gravitating towards digital. As a result, last year our state overseer appointed someone who actually knows a little about, bit about this type of work to create and manage our state website. I'm not trying to step into his boost, I know he's coming up next, but I do want to mention quickly that the information for both the state paper and the website come from the same place. Our state coordinators, local church reporters, and individuals such as yourselves supply every word they contain. But if we keep this information to ourselves, no one benefits. Eternal souls are hanging in the balance. This is the importance of the church in the world today. Not everyone will respond the same way to the same types of ministry. That's why the work of the different ministries of the church is so different, so diverse. We're reaching different individuals with different tastes and characteristics. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 9, 22, I am made all things to all men that I might by all means save some. And so we must effectively utilize every aspect of the ministry which has been entrusted to the church of God, to the church by God. I do want to apologize for not being diligent in re reminding our state workers of the impending deadlines for our articles. With God's help, I hope to do better this coming year, <coughs> be more effective in my work. Articles will be for the next uh, issue will be due the 1st of August. I do have cards available with my email address, phone number, and the due dates for articles. If anyone's interested in receiving them, please come see me. May God bless the church in every aspect of its ministry.